Hello everyone, welcome to Community Connection. I'm Luz Brown Swanson. Today we're gonna to take a look at the local teen scene and efforts to keep the teens right here on our community safe and on track. And no one understands our teenagers better today than Peninsula resident who's here joining me today. Greg Allen, thank you for being here. You're director of Freedom For You, working with teens day in and day out. Thank you for being here. Glad to be here. I wanna start off a little bit by talking about uh, Freedom For You and what it's all about. Well, basically about uh, 2002, uh, me and some other people in the community were looking at resources that were available for our teens, and there's a lot of great programs at the schools and clubs and mm -hmm. sports. But uh, I grew up here, and uh, if you talk to any kid on the hill, they'll tell you something that maybe isn't that uh, popular, but they'll say, it's boring here, there's nothing to do. Now, obviously, there's lots to do, and there's lots of great resources f for kids. But we saw a, a gap, and there's uh, a need for kids to have activities, uh, uh, things to do that they like to do, that they think are fun, that they enjoy to do. And so we kind of started this nonprofit youth organization with a goal aimed at doing, uh, meeting that need in the community. And um, for your background though, for the viewers watching who might mm. not know a lot about you, your commitment to kids, where did that come from? Talk a little bit about that. Well, um, I think, you know, thinking about that myself, <laughs> since I do so much kid stuff, I think I grew up watching my father, who was Coach George Allen, the football coach, uh, work with young people because, uh, you know, sometimes we forget the pro athletes are very young. <laughs> They're in their 20s and maybe mm -hmm. up to 30. So kind of mentoring and guiding young people. So I think I saw some vision there to do that. And then I've always worked as a professional counselor, really, for the most part, through the schools. I've, I've worked at all the schools in the South Bay uh, in the 1980s and with, with uh, parents and families. And I've been a licensed marriage and family therapist since... Uh, Oh, a long time, early 80s. So I've always worked with young people, one form or another, and uh, this sort of kind of, you know, transformed into this other community work. And one area you focus on, of course, is chemical dependency, an issue right. that parents deal with with teens, but you work also at Torrance Memorial I do. On, this, on this critical issue. I do. I work at Torrance Memorial and uh, at the Thelma McMillan Center for Chemical Dependency Treatment and it's outpatient programs for adults and also adolescents. So I went there in 03 to help design the teen program. They didn't have an adolescent program. that had an adult program for a long time. It was very successful, meeting a lot of needs in the community, and they wanted to do a teen program. So I kind of went there to help design that, and I oversee that, and it's very effective. We work with kids all the way down from El Segundo, Manhattan, Redondo, Torrance, the Hill, into San Pedro, and a lot of families uh, get a lot of help for kids that have gone, gotten off track Right. And I, I do experience a lot of kids getting off track. And so I know what it's like to see people that have kind of damaged their life or uh, really damage it seriously. I mean, every three to four weeks I hear of someone actually dying from some accident or some overdose or some fight or something happening. You know, it's just really tragic. Mm -hmm. So our kids really, you know, are at risk. Our kids are very healthy up here. And as people look at kids on the hill, they think, well, they have everything. They have money, they have wealth, they have comforts, and they do have a lot of economic uh, benefits and wonderful you know, things. But they're at risk in a lot of other areas. They're at risk emotionally, they're at risk in their social life, and they're at risk in the decisions they make. And so um, there's a definite need for programs and activities to keep our kids safe and healthy. Well, it's not easy being a teenager. We all know that yeah. you actually had you brought up four teenagers, right? Your youngest yeah. now is 23. Mm -hmm. um, what is the secret to keeping our teenagers safe and on track? And, and how do you do that with Freedom For You? Well, I think there's no uh, definite secret because some of the best parents who have done all the right things, right. Uh, their kids can still choose to go take, make a left turn and not uh, you know, go in a healthy direction. But at the same time, there's certain uh, principles that are really effective, and, and we do a lot of parenting things through Freedom For You. We have uh, life skills programs for uh, boys and for girls to help them with decision-making and choices, and, and we also have uh, school-based counseling that's happening in both high schools and in middle schools. So we have counselors you know, helping kids there that are, that are struggling. Um, but one thing that happens with parents is when your kids are little, you supervise them a lot when they're you know, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And when they get older into the teen years, we kind of stop supervising them because we think you know, they can manage their life, which they kind of can, and they kind of want to be on their own more, which is good. But then the kids that get into trouble, a lot of times the parents don't know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So I hate to expose all our wonderful teenagers, but there's quite, quite a secret world going on that adults right. don't know about. And the kids that, that I see that get into trouble, their parents don't know about and They're into it for many, many months of whether it's excessive drinking or you know, drug use 
or risky, other risky behavior, and they're not aware of what's happening. And uh, so staying connected to your kids in the teen years, doing activities together as families, even eating together uh, is important, and, and communicating. But communicating for adults, sometimes we forget it's listening. Right. <laughs> now, we talked about supervision um, being key, and one thing you're doing through your organization, your nonprofit, is with the Annex, yes. um, which is right next to the main library. Right. Um, and, of course, I met you there, and uh -huh. it's amazing what's going on there to have the safe, supervised opportunity for kids to do lots of fun things. Um, the Annex opened, what, now it's been two years? Yeah, September 2006. The Annex is a partnership with the Palos Verdes Library District. The Library District really helped lead the way to help the Annex happen. And we came along and joined together and, and shared in the cost and the staffing and the programs there. So it's a, it's a great after-school program, after-school needs, and it's the highest risk time for kids is after school, say 3 to 6 o'clock across the country, really, and it's the same here. Right. And so it's meeting that need. There's a lot of kids that are piling in there and having fun and, and doing safe, constructive things. Right. There was a lot of fun going on when I was there, so mm -hmm. I want to take a quick break, share with our viewers some interviews we had with the teens that are using the Annex and parents that are so thankful that it's there. Let's have a listen. Um, it's just a great place to come and hang out and have fun with uh, all my friends and then do, do some homework. And uh, what are some of your favorite things to do once you're here? Um, first, I just start playing video games, like playing Super Smash Bros. or Rock Band. Is this like considered a cool place to come? Or? Yeah, a lot of kids in my, at my school like to come. After school, the kids can come here and they can go to classes, they can actually do knitting classes, they have computers in here, there's staff available for the children and for um, just the kids to come and do some homework and it's a safe place for the kids to come. I think it's keeping them active and keeping the parents involved and uh, this is one way to do it to know that the kids can come here after school and they're actually participating and actively involved in something that's benefiting them. Kind of comforting for the parents to have that. Well, it's a place for the kids to go. There's, there's really no place else on the hill for the kids to go and, and make a little noise. If they go to the library, they're they're inconveniencing the other patrons that want to use the library for, for study and whatnot. And this is, this is a nice outlet. Um, it's a whole, wholesome environment. Um, the people that work here are fantastic. Great with the kids. My, uh, they, they're um, exposed to things that they, they wouldn't normally be exposed to. We have video games at home. I can, I can purchase these video games at home, but they're by themselves. This way they get to socialize with other kids doing the same things that they like to do. It's a, they have a lot of fun here, and so if they're having fun here, they're not going to want to hopefully look someplace else uh, for, for fun. Again, there's, there's supervision here, and I do see a number of high schoolers here, and it's a, it's, it's a good thing. I have to say, I wish there was an annex when I was growing up because it really gives the kids a fun place to go where it's actually cool to do the right thing. Yeah, definitely. You know? Definitely. And one thing you were saying to me in our interview prior was that you really would like to see more annexes probably on other sides of the hill or... Yeah, the, yeah. the hill is sort of geographically challenged. That, you know, someone on the east side, it's hard for the kids to get all the way over to the top of the hill there and even kids down in, in this area where we're here in Lana Bay or the... Point Vincenti side, it's hard to get all the way up there too. And there's really a need in different parts of the hill for youth programs, youth services. And the annex is open every day after school? Uh, yes, mm -hmm. Monday through Friday, 3 o'clock. And then also on the selective weekend nights, we do some high school programming. After school, it's mainly middle school kids coming mm -hmm. in there, some high school kids. But then we do some music nights uh, for, with high school kids perform and sing or do comedy or drama or you know, and, and it's really wonderful, and a lot of high school kids come and attend that. And 
It's, a, it's a, again, a safe, healthy place to, to go to. Now, beyond giving the kids a safe place to go, you're all, and also trying to tell them, help them to make the right choices, to stay safe, stay sober, you're also providing them leadership opportunities, um, opportunities in the arts. Where, how is that all moving along? It's, it's coming along good. Uh, a lot of the ideas that we come up with, we get from teens. So by talking to them and brainstorming with them, getting ideas and vision from kind of their heart, what they think might be a good thing to have or do, and so we'll dialogue with them and get ideas. And so mm -hmm. they'll help design sort of activities or programs. They'll help run, a, run the whole thing. And, and some kids get service credit or service projects, you know, service credit for being there and helping out at the, uh, at the functions. At, yeah, I was thinking, I saw one of the things you were doing with the, the middle school kids was to oh, have right. them create skits that they could share with incoming sixth graders. Yes, yeah, we're doing a service uh, learning project. So some students at, uh, at Richgrass Intermediate are, are working on an anti-drug skit that they're working on each once a week, and then they're, they're going to perform it for uh, fifth graders incoming to middle schools at the different middle schools on the hill. So they get a, they're doing some service, but they're doing something a little more meaning and has a learning component uh, tied into it. Right. Now, getting that message out to the kids today, when we talked before, I think you said maybe tw at least half of the kids, high school age kids, are probably using drugs or drinking? Would you no, say not that, that high. Okay. Ho hopefully not that high. Okay. If you talk to someone that regularly smokes marijuana, they'll tell you it's 85%. Right. But that's 85% of their social group. Okay. So almost what, everybody what they know does. The does. numbers are like, like? It's probably, you know, 30 to 35% of kids are high school students. And it, it increases throughout the grades. Mm -hmm. So it's more when you get to see, towards senior year. Are, are weekly getting drunk. And not just drinking to relax, they're getting smashed, they're blacking out, they don't know what they're doing, they're throwing up, they're, you know, they're out of control. And during those episodes, anything can happen. Anything bad can happen. And it's just a roll of the dice whether you get through the night okay or, or you're all right. At the same time, there's probably that many kids that are smoking marijuana regularly. You know, at least, at least weekly. One third of the teens here. Yeah. And, and how many kids are really at, I mean, they're all at risk, I guess, but truly at risk? Well, I'd say those, that number, 35%, something, you know, if I had to right. pick, a, pick an estimate, are... Because of their behavior, the decisions, the choices they're ma making, as well as uh, you know, just how they live their life, just being their age, they do risky things. Whether it's uh, you know sexual activity, or it's uh, driving, or I mean, just the activities they get into are, are risky. The things they think are fun are you know dangerous to them. Now, why do you think most teens party that do make that choice? Is it because it is it the peer pressure? Is it because it's just not easy being a teenager? I, there's no one reason really, because you're looking at research, you know, right. across the country. There's no, uh, and our kids aren't that different from the other kids across the national uh, statistics. Uh, there's no one reason. A lot of the reasons are the same reasons adults drink: to relax, to get away from pressure, to to uh, have fun, to take a time out, to escape, uh, as well as a big curiosity factor, and as well as the peer pressure isn't friends saying here, try this, do what I'm doing. It's more your friends that you've grown up with that have been doing basically healthy activities, you know, sports or having fun or playing games. Mm -hmm. Now these friends are beginning to try substances. And so that's the pressure is do I stay with my peer group or not? Do I do what they're doing or what they're risking or, or experimenting and getting into? Right. I think you also told me that for the teen out there that's made that decision to party, um, that you can tell them don't do it for all these host of reasons, their health, whatever, but unless there's a consequence involved, when will they finally not do that? Right, it's hard for someone to change unless there's a, a negative consequence. And right. so a lot of uh, teens don't change. The, if they're going in an unhealthy direction with their choices, decisions, behavior, they usually won't change that direction unless there's some consequence. <clears throat> so that's where the parents, I think, need to step in and give them a consequence. So, and say you can't drive until you're, you're, you're making better choices or you can't do this or that which means you're going to be unpopular. A lot of parents do not want to take on their kids and challenge their children anymore right? because their kids I are... Mean, it's known right here in the Hill there are p kids having parties, that there's alcohol there, parents are allowing that. What do you say to... Uh, how do you curb that? Well, I mean, they're participating in, in, in illegal activity, you know, and, and uh, so it's, it's just not a good thing to do. It's, uh, mm -hmm. You're teaching the kids it's okay to do something illegal, it's okay to drink, to have fun, and then <coughs> the problem is it, it escalates for a lot of people. Right. You've been working with youth for years and trying to keep, help them make the right choice. For parents watching, they're looking for just that perfect answer to uh, you know, sit down with their kids to, to keep them mm -hmm. and going in the right direction. Um, what do you tell the parents? to? Uh, just spend time with your kids. You know, we get so busy as adults and, and just running around doing activities and trying to work or earn money 
or whatever we're doing, that we, we get disconnected from our kids. So spend time together and actually listen to your kids mm -hmm. you know, have a relationship with them where you hear what's going on in their life, what their things they're concerned about, the challenges they're facing, whether it's the academic you know, pressure to succeed or social situations they're in. So it's really the same way you build a relationship with anyone. And sometimes with our kids, we kind of uh, get away from that. Well, I have two teenagers now, so I'm dealing with it every day. Um, but a day coming up that's very exciting I want to mm -hmm. mention um, is the Freedom For You fundraiser mm -hmm. that's coming up on April 23rd. Talk about that. It's going to be very exciting. Yeah, Evening with the stars. Evening with the stars. So we have a lot of uh, ex-professional uh, athletes coming. We have a, a, if you like football, this will be a great night for football fans. There'll be some entertainment individuals there. There'll be some producers and casting people and you know that are very involved in the entertainment community, but you may not recognize them. Uh, but we have a Deacon Jones coming. We have Tim Brown coming. We have uh, Rosie Ron, Greer, Rosie Greer, Ron Brown, uh, Leroy Irvin, Rod Martin, Mar Fleming, Dabney Coleman. So and there'll be other stars there, and they're all great individuals. They're really fun to talk to people, and they're they're excited to come and, and help support what we're doing to help support kids programs, and uh, they're giving their time, and, and they'll be able to interface with them and talk with them. And, and that's April 23rd. Them. April 23rd at the Interpretive Center. We have a lot of great uh, restaurants uh, and a lot of great, uh, great auction food. items. Great time, great and time. Uh, you can log on to freedomcommunity.com's website to get yes. the information, mm -hmm. and uh, it should be really exciting. We'll be there, Channel 33, with our camera crew, and of course, wanting to uh, talk to all of you and uh, help promote what you're trying to do, because you're doing amazing work. Greg, anything you want to add? You want the community to know, the teens out there, about just efforts that you're making with Freedom For You? Uh, just a couple things are upcoming. We have, we have some of our life skills workshops upcoming. We have a Girl Wise workshop on April 19th and a Wise Guys for Boys on April 26th. Our website has the information. But they're geared to help uh, teens with decision-making, choices, dealing with uh, emotional things, uh, communication, time management. Uh, stress, things like that, so they're to help equip them for life. What about for you personally? Why do you love doing this so much? It's uh, I, to me, it's like why not? <laughs> you know, young people to me are very exciting to see their their uh, energy, their passion for life, their curiosity. You know, I think those are all the wonderful characteristics they have, and if we can help guide that in a healthy direction, helping them find their talent, their ability, their kind of purpose, what they want to do with themselves, mm -hmm. that's a big part of what we're part of, and that's very gratifying to see that. To see someone, when I see the kids performing, that's the freedom part. It's freedom for you, freedom for that individual that's you know expressing himself. It, it's uh, I just love to see them having fun and. I'm obviously a big kid at heart. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. And uh, you mentioned the talent. We're going to close out this show with talent that you have coming into uh, the annex. And you do one of these awakening concerts mm -hmm. around the hill. So um, it's been great having you here. I look forward to seeing you at your, your fundraiser. Keep up the great work, Greg Allen, with the Freedom For You. And that will do it for this edition of Community Connection. We hope you enjoy the music that's coming out of um, the annex and Freedom From You's um, great, great awakening concerts. Uh, join us next time. Until then, I'm Liz Brown Swanson. Have a great day out there.